Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to cover important aspects that needs to be checked in um, system design rounds for data engineers. This will be, uh, this video will be like a follow up on uh, on the system design video that's already in my channel. Uh, in the previous video, I have covered the framework and the questions that need uh, that you need to ask in your interviews or even in your day to day job to come up with a good design. Uh, in this video, what I'll do, I'll quickly cover those aspects as well on a very high level. And then um, I'll go over the important aspects that you need to check during the interviews. Uh, basically, if you uh, go over the, the important aspects that I covered today in your interviews, it will give your interviewer an idea or uh, a confidence, uh, you know, that you have well-rounded understanding of designing a data pipeline. So let's get started. Um, so these, the first aspect is from the previous video. So basically where I've talked about the framework, right? Uh, framework for designing data pipeline or in fact, any software system, right? Gather the requirements by asking questions. This is one of the very important aspects in your interviews ask as many questions as possible. Don't jump into the design straightforward. Um, uh, trust me, asking as many questions as possible will help interviewer evaluate your understanding reasoning. It's not about coming up with a 100% accurate or 100% good design. It's always about asking questions, understanding the requirements, being collaborative and coming up with uh, a, you know, a design that's flexible you know, those are the important aspects that the interviewer is looking for. So always ask as many questions as possible. Um, I'm repeating myself, but this is the most important aspect in uh, aspect in system design round. Okay. So once you ask a bunch of questions, you know, on the, um, you know, on the output side of things, like always start from customer, right? Always start from the output. Like important questions are how the data is consumed, how often data needs to be refreshed, what's important for customer, is it consistency, availability, all that stuff, right? And then you go to the ingestion layer, you understand where you are getting the data from, how often you are getting the data, what's the size, format, all that stuff. Once you have all this information, you will come up with a high level design and then you'll get the feedback from the interviewer, make some changes if needed to your high level design and then you jump into your low level design where you will chart down all the detailed components in your design end to end. So this was the framework that I've discussed in another video uh, as well. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, uh, please uh, check that video as well. In this video, I wanted to go over the important aspects that you need to uh, cover whenever you're designing a data pipeline. Maybe have this as a checklist whenever you go for interviews next time. Have this as a checklist and maybe uh, you know check each box uh, um, to make sure that you have covered this in the interviews. Uh, so one of the important aspects is scalability. So whenever you design a pipeline, let's say you're interviewing for Walmart and uh, uh, you have to design your data pipeline um, to consume data from, let's say, fulfillment centers. Uh, let's say Walmart have uh, 100 fulfillment centers today but it can grow, right? What does grow means uh, like Walmart can have like thousand fulfillment centers in, you know, next two years. That means you'll have more data coming in. Uh, so your data pipeline should be scalable enough to manage growing data needs, to handle growing data needs. So that's what uh, scalability means. So when you design a pipeline, right? Make sure your storage and compute uh, services that you use in your data pipeline will accommodate scalability. Let's say if you're using S3, S3 is uh, by default scalable, like you can put as much data as you want, right? Um, and also for compute, let's say you're using Redshift cluster, or maybe you're using uh, Glue or uh, you know EMR, just make sure whatever the services that you use in your pipeline, allow accommodate scalability for future needs, right? So this is very important aspect that you need to make sure to, and that you that you need to cover during your interviews or even in like day-to-day -day work as well. Mm -hmm. And then validation. 
um, validation is also one of the important pieces uh, for your pipeline. Um, you need to have some kind of validation in place. Uh, for an example, let's say you're consuming data in JSON format uh, from your upstream software team, right? It's always good to have data contract in place. Uh, when I say data contract, it's like, you know, this is the schema, these are the attributes that you need to expect, correct? Uh, you know, and these are the attributes that are optional, meaning uh, some records might have those rec attributes, some records might not have those records. So it's always good to have a data contract with your upstream teams or the teams where you are consuming the data from and build your validation rules based on the data contract or based on the schema. So if something fails or, you know, if your upstream team passes, uh, passes in like sends over some junk data, you want to make sure your uh, pipeline is still functional, even, even though... Uh, you have bad data coming in, you want to make sure that it doesn't impact your pipeline. Meaning, let's say you, have, you are getting in 100 records and, and say 10 records are bad. Uh, you don't want those 10 records, uh, bad 10 records to mess up whole you know processing of other 90 records. Um, again, it depends on the requirements, uh, but make sure you have some kind of validation in place or at least talk about validation. Uh, discuss validation when you are doing your system design route. And then notification system go hand in hand with validation. You know, let's say if something fails um, from the previous example, let's say 10 records don't pass validation. How do you want to uh, manage those 10 records? Do you want to send an alert to upstream team saying that those 10 records didn't follow the schema of the data contract? So we have like rejected them, you know, take a look at these records. Um, you know, that's some one kind of uh, notification. Other kind of notification is that uh, for some reason, some component in your pipeline is failing. Let's say your Lambda, glue job, EMR, whatever the compute, right? Whatever, but the, maybe you have some bug in your code and it's, <clears throat> and it's uh, making your data pipeline fail. In those cases, you want an alerting system so that it sends out an alert to your on call or to yourself. Uh, so that you can uh, take a look and fix the issues uh, proactively instead of some someone coming to you and telling you know there is an issue with your pipeline, right? So make sure uh, you cover this notification part as well in the system design round, and then maintainability. There are two important aspects, but this is more uh, for your regular day to day job. But uh, feel free to cover this in interviews as well. Uh, backfilling, how? flexible is your design or how uh, can your design allow backfilling? So what does backfilling mean? Let's say your pipeline ran for a uh, month of April and in uh, first week of May, uh, you got to know there is an issue with, uh, you know, business logic that you have got or maybe issue with the upstream data or uh, any kind, any kind, there can be any kind of issue, right? So uh, now you have to backfill the whole uh, month of April's data. Is your design flexible enough to accommodate backfilling? Is it easy to backfill whenever there is an issue? So it's very important to have backfilling uh, covered as well whenever you're designing. And then item potency or item potent, meaning your pipeline needs to be uh, item potent, meaning no matter how many times you run your pipeline, it should always produce same results. Let's say you have a batch pipeline and you run it for today, which is April 27th uh, at 10 a.m. And let's say you run the same pipeline on April 27th at 11 a.m. It shouldn't generate different results. It should generate the same results. Um, if it generates a different results, then it will be a mess for you to fix the pipeline. So always make sure um, uh, to have your pipeline as item potent by picking the light, uh, right load strategy, right? There are different load strategies, right? Like insert, replace, merge, upset. So make sure uh, your load strategy fits your use case, fits your business purpose, uh, and then uh, have your pipeline item potent so that it's very easy to maintain. And then last important aspect that I wanted to cover is auditing or data sanity. You run your pipelines, great. You are getting the input data and you know it goes through your pipeline and you get the output data. 
but how will you make sure that whatever the data that you are producing is accurate or it's uh, valid data right have some rules in place in your pipeline or outside your pipeline uh, right to make sure that your data is valid uh, going back to our example walmart ex example right let's say if your network has 100 fulfillment centers today or 100 stores 100 sites um, and you're expected to have data from all, all 100 sites uh, whenever you process the pipeline daily so just have it distinct on warehouse ID or site ID or fulfillment ID to make sure that you get all the 100 sites uh, whenever you are processing, right? If you get more than 100 or if you get, you know, uh, way less than 100, maybe let's say you, you get uh, 10 site, ten unique site IDs for that uh, day, then, you know, there is a huge problem with your upstream or somewhere in your pipeline that needs to be fixed. So it's always important to have the uh, data sanity checks or uh, data auditing in places for uh, in, in place for uh, for big data products or you know for big for your pipelines so these are the important aspects that i wanted to cover i'll uh, go over uh, uh, summarize whatever we have covered uh, quickly so basically we talked about the framework you ask questions get the requirements do the high level design get the sign off, get feedback from your interviewer or from your stakeholders, and then jump into low level design, okay? And whenever you're designing, doing your low level design, make sure you cover all these important aspect, aspects. Make sure your pipeline is scalable. Make sure you have validation rules in place. Make sure you have notification alerting systems in place if something goes wrong. Make sure your pipeline is maintainable make sure you have data sanity checks in place as well so if you cover all these uh, uh, aspects uh, it will be uh, it will show your depth and it will pro it will help with your interview as well hope you have enjoyed this video and i'm looking forward to making more videos like this on system design thanks for watching bye